In the last video, we talked about how when you explicitly define your columns and you don't define any rows, they are just automatically created, which is what we call implicit. Now let's talk about this thing called grid auto flow. And uh, it's not, I don't think this is something you're going to be using all the time because it uh, determines if your, your new elements are added as rows or as columns. Uh, but let's learn it just in case you ever do want to do one of those horizontally scrolling uh, elements. So let's open up 06 and auto flow start. I've got two items here and I've displayed gridded it. Let's turn on our dev tools just to make sure we're sort of watching what's going on here. Now let's add two columns real quick. So grid template columns, 400 PX, 200 PX. Good. Give it a save. And you see that we have one row, two columns, and uh, we've explicitly defined the two columns. Now, what happens when we add a third item? Well, you should know this by now, that it will automatically be wrapped onto the next line and we will have an implicit row that has been created. Now, grid auto flow, what that will do is it will determine whether when you need to add another row or column, because we've only defined enough for two spots here, but we have three. So what do we do with the extra? It will define whether that is then created in a row, which is the default, or if it tacks it on to uh, the right hand side over here. Or actually, one little neat thing is depending on which direction your language uh, is in. Some some languages CSS grid will re read left to right, but that's a that's another video. So it will determine whether it will tack it onto a row or another column. So by default, when we can go in here, we can say uh, grid auto flow. And if we say row, it's not going to do anything because that's the default. The other option is column. And what that will do, whoa, look what we got here. Let's change this to black and see what we got. Now you can see that the extra item is not being created as a row, but it is now being created as an extra column. So as we add extra items in here, -do 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 -do, you'll see that they are all automatically added uh, and they will go to the right and eventually cause a horizontal scroll to actually happen. Um, and then we could also go in here and say grid auto columns. Maybe we want them to be 200 pixels wide. And now this grid auto columns is saying anything that any columns that have been implicitly created, do I need to zoom in dotted line? That means it's been implicitly created. You see the solid one defines where the explicit grid ends. Uh, then those will be 200 pixels and you can see that they scroll and I got some fun stuff going on with my background here because uh, of the gradient that starts and stops. So again, I haven't found a whole lot of use case for that. Maybe you you will find a use case for wanting them to go uh, left to right or right to left instead of top to bottom. In Flexbox, we sort of have a similar thing with flex direction, uh, which by default, when you add a flex item, they go left to right, but you can also flip it uh, to be a column and it will go top to bottom uh, as well as reverse. There is no reverse in, in CSS grid. Uh, other than that, that is grid auto flow, you can change it to row or column or, and the pretty cool one is actually this called grid auto flow dense. Um, but that's pretty cool. It's, it'll sort of like fit them in where there's space, but we need to learn a little bit more about sizing these actual items first before we can get into that dense one. See you in the next one.